Hi, and welcome to Allen High School's discussion of acid-base chemistry. We're at the AP and IBHL1 level, or first-year college. Now, uh, we're working on buffers right now. Uh, we've already defined them in a previous video, and in another video we're going to do mathematics. What I want to focus on here are the concepts of a buffer, so you understand the underlying chemistry behind buffer systems. So let's take a look at the general concepts. The first thing is key. What we have to have to be a buffer system is we have to have an equilibrium. We have to have the ability to go both forward and backwards if we want to respond to that addition of small amounts of acids and bases. So this shows a generalized acid equation. And so if we've set up, this is a weak acid, that's the only way you're going to get a weak, an equilibrium is with a weak acid. If we add a little bit of H+, plus, like HNO3 or HCl or HClO4, or something like that, what will it do? Well, the first step is to identify in the equilibrium what an acid will react with. So acids react with bases. So we want to find the base. So the H plus, H plus will react with A minus to form HA, whoops, that should not be that, that should be a single arrow, to form HA. In other words, it shifts our equilibrium in this direction towards the reactant side. If I added a base, bases react with acids. So my hydroxide is going to react with my acid any acid plus any base neutralization is a stoichiometry till the limiting runs out. And in this case, I'm going to get water plus A minus. In other words, it responds by shifting the equilibrium in the forward direction. That's why we need a little bit of each. Now, sorry, I don't know why my pen's not cooperating well today, but Hopefully you can get the idea. All right, let's take a look at this next one. This is based on a weak base as its foundation. So if I add acid, the acid H plus will react with the base that I'm using the letter B for. And if it does that, it's going to form its conjugate HB plus. These are reactions you need to wrap your mind around and be able to replicate and understand. So I shifted, it shifts the reaction towards the right hand side. Okay, um, bases are going to react with the acid. So I have HB plus is going to react with my hydroxide and that is going to form H2O and my base. I'll get my base back. So what I've done is I have moved the equilibrium to the left to consume product and form reactant. So there's a little bit of Le Chatelier principle kind of going on here. All right, whoops, and I did it again. And let's make sure we fix that, kiddos. Don't, don't let me mess up. Any acid plus any base is a neutralization Till the limiting runs out. So that should have been a single arrow. Now, how do we pick a good buffer? Well, what we, we need to have both the acid and its conjugate or the base and its conjugate. And they do not need to be ideal. They do not, or they do not need to be equal to one another. But as a starting point, you would want them equal. So if they're equal to one another, they'll cancel. So if they cancel, that means that if it's an acid, the Ka is equal to the molarity of the H3O+, plus, or pKa is equal to pH. If it was a base, it's Kb compared to OH minus, and pKb being approximately equal to pOH. For some of you who like the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, I personally like it better for buffers as well. 
So um, I'll let you kind of work on that part for the mathematics. Okay, so buffers, um, the buffering capacity deals with how much of each of these I can add. So we saw the reactions for adding it, but how much? Define small, in, in other words. Define small. How much acid or how much base can we um, add? So if we have high molarities, so if we have a high molarity of say our A minus and our HA, the higher the molarity of these two, the more acid and base they can absorb. Right? If you have small molarities, the addition of acid and base will use these up and we'll no longer have our equilibrium. So as you increase molarity of your buffering components, you increase the buffering capacity. All right, so now let's go on to see how we can make this. There's uh, effectively four ways we can make these, all right? The first is you want to take, and, and I don't know, I lost my um, double arrows here, so if you could put those into your notes, please. Um, that was a word to micro, you know, to my Mac mess up. Okay, so if I want to make one that's based on a weak acid, maybe I should say, um, has the foundation of a weak acid, so I won't use the word base so many times. I can add a weak acid and a salt of the conjugate base. So I could add HNO2, nitrous acid, and a salt of its conjugate might be potassium nitrite. That would be an example. And I would want them in, you know, roughly a one-to-one -one ratio. The exact ratio is going to depend on the pH that you're targeting to buffer, all right? Now, I could do the same concept with my weak base. So I'll, I'll just use the simple ammonia is a base. The ammonium ion is its conjugate. Now, I want to use an anion in this case or a cation in this case that does not have acid-base properties, right? So chloride won't react with water to make HCl because HCl is a strong acid and it goes 100% to dissociation, okay? Now, the other way is to start with your weak acid and neutralize a good portion of it. So I can add some sort of strong base, NaOH, KOH, any group one, group two hydroxide except beryllium and magnesium. And I, I didn't do, I didn't want to do exactly half because I don't want you to think that it has to be half. And do you notice after I do my stoichiometry, my hydroxide is my limiting, that I end up with some of my weak and some of my conjugate. In other words, I have a buffer situation. Okay, now I could do the same case with a weak base. So this is a weak base. I could add a strong acid, maybe nitric acid. And I'm going to neutralize a portion, not all of it. I want to leave behind some of my weak base and form some of its conjugate. So now I have a mixture of the two and that's the heart of a buffer. So you need to be able to recognize some of these um, buffering systems and whether a combination will give you, of compounds will give you, result in a buffering situation. So let's look at this little example here. I've got HNO3 um, with strontium hydroxide. That's a strong acid with a strong base there's no equilibrium, so there's no buffer. Doesn't matter what combination uh, that I have of these two, I'm not gonna be able to make a buffer from those. Okay, the next one is benzoic acid. That is a weak acid. Now, you've gotta get good at throwing off those spectator ions. 
So if I threw off the sodium plus, I have the benzoate ion. That's my conjugate base. That's why we did that conjugate activity in the hopes that you would recognize these things. So learn to throw off spectator ions. And that's yes, as long as I have some of each of those, I have an equilibrium, I have a buffer system. The same here, I'm gonna throw off that bromide because it's a spectator ion with no acidic or basic properties. I have a weak base and I have its conjugate acid. So that's yes, that will make a buffer system. HCl is a strong acid. Uh, NaCl, you might think of chloride as its conjugate, but it's a non-reactive conjugate. So this is no, this is a strong acid and a salt. There's no equilibrium present. And without an equilibrium, we cannot have a buffer. So that's a big no. All right, now how do we start? How do we start deciding what's gonna be the heart of our buffer system? Well, you want the pKa, you want the pKa of your buffer to, to be approximately or close to the pH at which you want to you know you want to buffer. So let's say I wanted to do an experiment and I want to control my pH and it's a biological system and I want the pH controlled at pH 4. Well, let's look at the pKa's. Again, why we learned to estimate. So if that's an 8, that means this is 7 point something. Okay? If that's a one, that's really low, that's zero point something. And this is going to be three point something. Okay, I'm not worried about what follows right now. You can certainly plug those into your calculators, but we can answer this question without that because clearly the closest one to four is our lactic acid system. Okay, this is iodic acid, lactic acid, hypochlorous acid. So I would start with that, and in our next video, you would see how we take a buffer like that and what combination, what masses do we use, what relative amounts of the acid and its conjugate are used to achieve that desired pH. So until then, this is always loving my kiddos. Thanks for watching.